The last time I was locked inside, I hated myself. Every part of me was hollering to be let out of this 10 by 10 square room that I considered a prison, but now the world calls it sanctuary. Standing at my window in safety as the outside is covered in invisible flames, burning anything that comes into contact, desecrating families and taking folks struggling to hang on. The air is getting thinner. I am running out of food. What the hell does a hug even feel like? Screams and panic echo at night. Some folks still believe in jokes even when the Grim Reaper's death toll is ringing loud like the devil's casinos. I think we just hit the jackpot. Someone called me a crackpot for how often I tend to talk to myself, having daily check-ins with a bottle of gin and simply lemonade. Sweet and a little bit of sour with a strong hit of wake up, Mr. Brunt. You gotta do something. You gotta snap out of it. You gotta create something. Pick up the pen and write until your fingers fall off from the friction of how fast the words hit the paper. Pacing back and forth so much, the soles of my feet start to bleed on the carpet, leaving my footprint. Making all this a little too real. Because let's be honest. My routine has gone out the window. What used to be early mornings of preparation for the next gig. Wake up. Say lines. Brush teeth. Say lines. Run around the house while shouting. Guess what? More lines. Spinning lines till they orbited around my brain. Then rushing to my car full speed ahead to the next destination. The sensation that I was about to make magic. So spectacular that Disney would come after me for it. But everything in 2020 is turning up goofy. Better grab my straw hat so I can set out like Luffy to the front door so I can twist the knob back and forth. Pretending to leave to escape to the next adventure. Yes, I hope things will get better just like anyone. Preach about hope and grace and speaking to the sun. Got people reaching out sanitized elbows to show the battles won. When people still clutch their pearls and reach for guns at the side of my parents' son. See, this ain't the first time I've been in the pandemic. My whole life is one. Constantly having to look over my shoulder and send out my location because who knows when my life is done. Lost lots of peeps along the way to the secondhand amendment. Maybe I'm losing it bit by bit, trying to hold on to the sanity so I sit indoors, indoors, trying to figure it out. Putting pen to paper than speaking from mouth because even though the world is going south, I hope you can all figure it out. So build your puzzles. Enjoy the time with loved ones if you can. Check in with folks through the tech. Wash your hands, stay healthy, breathe so that maybe one day, one day, we can talk about this in the future as the world is green again. People are giving each other love again. Howl at the moon at eight. Support the people making a difference so we can create a new world together so we can be one so that one day we can truly be free.
In the presence of touch, fear. In the absence of fear, touch. In the contagion of tears, be seen and not heard, girls. Don't cry, boys. In the isolation of shelter, innovation. In the shelter of innovation, isolation. We want to be seen. We want to be told that we are safe. We want to breathe and dance together again. In the silence of origin, myth. In the origin of myth, silence. I want to know the stories that have been swept under the rug, intentionally forgotten to build this ivory tower of sand or a midden of ghosts. The land was never without. They were here first. And we'd love to believe it doesn't matter anymore who fought who, who started it, who enslaved who, who ended it, who won, who lost, who we were born as, who we were shaped into, and how the who's are upholding a toxic cycle. I hear a crisis can bring out the best and worst in us, in the choosing to be gentle with each other and the making do with what remains in creation, community, and necessity. That may not make us heroes, but I am proud to have friends who value curiosity over contempt. In the asking of trust, illumination. In the illumination of asking, trust. Hi, Tucker. Hi. So we were wondering, what makes you feel hope during this time? My family does because, well, well, what makes my family make me feel hope is that, it's, well, what it is, it's just, I feel like I have someone to trust, someone that's by my side, someone that's going to help me defeat this. Yeah. And have you experienced wonder during this crazy time? Well, I just, I'm like, I, I hear my dad say, hey, there's this virus spreading around the whole world. And I'm like, and I'm like this in my head. Whoa, the whole world? That's a huge virus. Yeah. An Invitation by Selena Maluski. The pen is mightier than sword, you see, and so are you, to we, not free, to be an artist's to be good, not honor only want and should. For in these times of plague and woe, you must always fearless go, to tread a swinging cord's wide arc, and fear not sickness, age, or dark. Your paths like arrows, light-torn flight, a sail, a door, a soaring kite. Each day brings news and seismic gasps. Could each new morn be our sweet last? You'll never know till trials bring the sweeping of the dawn's swift wing, a time where people walk outdoors and hail the waves back to their shores, where every end of suffering lies in the hands of those who sing. Tiptoe from your pillow the shadow of the willow tree, won't you tiptoe to the tulips with me? Coming live from WWWD is <coughs> Wanda Blunderlout and the Hayseed Players! Woo!
isn't it? Yeah, how so? Well, it's a landmark, you know, it's like, there's just, just think, think the way people used to think, where, when they didn't have compasses, where they'd have to pick and, and know the trees. And this is the kind of tree that you could know, you know, so distinct, burnt, broken, and dead. And just at the crest of this hill, so you can sight on it as you come to it. So it's a real marker. Wayfinding is when you're stumbling around in the dark and you're wondering where and how you're going to get out of this. And it's filled with fear and confusion and uncertainty. And sometimes wayfinding is an adventure and full of mystery and pleasure. And the only real difference is our own expectations. And so I like how neutral wayfinding is because it puts the responsibility on ourselves to decide how it, how it feels. I want to uh, explain what I think of as grief. Grief is when there's intense love for something and that something is no longer present. And so it's kind of like the arrow looking for the target. And um, the um, what I wonder is kind of the exact opposite. Wonder is the target yourself waiting to be struck by the um, the love of the universe, and you just don't know from where it will come from. And so wonder is that sense of, I'm open to the love of the universe to arrive. I just don't know from where. So there, um, one is the arrow looking for the target, one is the target looking for the arrow. And what does my body grieve the most right now is I'm a bicycle commuter. I am used to riding my bike 10 miles a day and it wants to just get out there and ride and go places and that's not happening. Um, and so that's what my body grieves. What does my body wonder in that sense? What What is it waiting for? And I think that um, it's just wondering, uh, will it, um, will I be stricken or not um, by this, uh, by the virus? And that, that's what my body, body is wondering about. Bye for now. I needed to lay my head on the soft pillows of a forgotten living room to remember about nature and cycles. The room welcomed me back with a symphony of creaking wood floorboards thirsty for footfalls. The brittle bones of the abandoned room welcomed me back with the loving embrace of a grandmother. I quickly realized my touch was the nourishment needed to make flowers grow again amongst each bony rafter, tending my own garden sanctuary after a much too long hiatus. And like Anana, I arrive at the threshold of my forgotten home, stripped bare of anything I had or thought I had before. And all I want to do now is grow flowers. Probably five years. I don't know how long ago it fell, but I've been watching it in every light and every time of year in the snow the moonlight. So I'm going to walk up to it because you can't really tell the scale now. Mm -hmm. But there's a phenomenal amount of energy. Like you can see how that part, you can see how that part. Is that? Yeah. You can see how it blew off the top. Just you can see the strength of that energy and landed. And then it, the branch structure is holding it up. And now the thing that's exciting to me is it's kind of like this crazy animal and it's kind of scary but it's, it's really beautiful too someday maybe in our lives it's going to rot to the point where it's going to and then it'll be a different energy 
It is such a beautiful thing. I mean, I wouldn't... I don't know, you think about art and you think about powerful, like, shows and museums. Um, just, it's, I keep using the word energy, but it's outside and it's got this, the other amazing thing is it's got the circle of trees around it. It's almost like it's, it's, it's not intentional, but there's a pattern and, and a rhythm or a natural synchronicity to way the way all of these fit together. And I think part of it's because this tree is one of the elders shaded this area so there was no growth here. And now that it's fallen, these, these other younger trees are filling in the circle around it. So it's sort of this shift of energy. In the nights you are alone but cannot sleep, away from eyes that watch your every move, control you, the articles that try to help you, the distractions from this growing pain. I'm not always sure it's growing pains. When a million voices cry out every night and every day, I'm not completely convinced they aren't also mine. I want to go out on the water, away from all of this, into the mountains, the forest, the desert, to become lost in an earthland where no one can know me, my being, and without me, where I can be covered in vines and salt. Among the loved ones, words tangled in limbs and sheets and calls and photos, there's no relief, not really. I could burn every last theory and data point. When a number equates a life, I can't read anymore. So I go into the night to my comforts, to drugs of choice, sex or TV, sleep, spiritual bypassing, and go alone onto the sidewalk to a warm wind that beckons no summer. Let me stalk through the house in secret to eat the food that would otherwise be watched, hunting by name of a hunger that none can truly fill. I want to hear unequivocal words. I want no more questions, a resounding hush, a respite, singularity. Let's cancel our names and our debts. I want to be honest with you. Listen to me. There are shouts in my stomach from silence and misunderstanding. We precariously moderate each day our truth, our feelings. What would it be if we could scream and become wild in our grief and our fears and our desires? I promised I would no longer moderate my desires. This crisis is not one of silence, the slow death. And so I must become raw on the sidewalk outside the house and dance the feral under a sun that never heats me enough but burns my skin until I am human enough to belong to the land. When Fiona got in touch about this project to examine the relationship between grief and wonder, it caused me to examine my understandings of things like attachment and loss and our essential nature as animals who occasionally think and always feel and I thought back over a lifetime of experiences and readings and philosophy and psychology and religion and jotted down some notes about wayfinding that I'd like to share. I've come to understand that grief is a response to losing something or someone important enough to have been loved. So dynamically, Grief is love with no place to go. Love stymied. Then with time, wonder arises when that love tentatively discovers a new target of attention. And the cycle of wonder, attachment, loss, and grief can repeat over and over. Alternatively, Practicing Buddhists recommend against strong attachments. A general love for the many rather than a fierce love for a few. With everything as a source of wonderment and nothing to grieve. Finding one's way through life in this context is simply a release from suffering into serenity through loving kindness. 
easier said than done. Pope Francis then tied the current pandemic into this formulation with his statement that the virus is an indication that we're out of balance with the earth. In many indigenous cultures, physical health, emotional health, and social health all require respect for nature and fitting individual and group activity into the web of all other life. Putting those several thoughts together, if we can focus our love more broadly to include all of creation, we can find our way out of successive griefs and avoid environmental disaster in a world that's filled with wonder. As Jack Kerouac said in a letter to his wife, practice kindness all day and you'll realize you're already in heaven. And our physical bodies are the proper reference points for all of these matters. We feel and learn and understand only through our bodily senses and the work of our millions of cells. They were constructed from the raw materials of the earth and will return there someday. Recycle. There's just the utter miracle of the body while we're here, arising from and supported by the earth. We refuse to grasp that and to honor the absolute wonder of our nature within nature at our collective peril. But even if we humans outrace our understandings into thoughtless extinction, life on earth will continue evolving just fine. It was a beautiful self-balancing system before humans arose and would be so again if we depart. The earth abides, or as the traditional mantra puts it, world without end both the way and the wonder, with everything to love and nothing to grieve. I'd like to finish by reading a short poem that I ran across when thinking about Fiona's project. It goes like this, and I think it's pertinent. When I die, Give what's left of me to children in need and old men waiting for death. If you have to cry, cry for the person walking the street beside you. And when you need me, put your arms around anyone and give them the time and care you'd have given me. Because I want to leave you something better than words or things. Help me care for people I've known and loved and strangers I might have met. Let me live on in your actions, not just your memories. Because love doesn't die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. <laughs>